Build a tribe of loyal fanatics who will do anything they can to help you build and grow your business on today's episode of Serve No Master. Today's episode is brought to you by Thrive Themes. Beautiful WordPress templates, beautiful landing pages, and perfect sales pages. Everything you need to make your business thrive. Go to servenomaster.com backslash Thrive Themes. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host... Imagine what you could accomplish with an army of dedicated, raving followers out there telling everyone about your business, telling everyone about your products, telling everyone how amazing you are, and buying everything that you have for sale. That's really the power and the wonder of a tribe. Most of us think that to achieve success, you have to have millions and millions of followers. But in reality, you can do very well with a following of just a thousand loyal fans that are more than fans, that they're your tribe, people you connect with, people that you interact with, and people that are really excited about what you're doing. The stronger your connection with your following, the more successful you can be. There's a law called the law of effectation. Sometimes it's called the butterfly effect. Sometimes it's called the law of vibration that says your wealth, your income is driven by two factors, the number of people you affect and how powerful that effect is. For example, if you and me worked together and I one-on-one coached you for the next year, we talked every day on the phone for two hours, that'd be a huge amount of effect, a very large effect, but on a very small scale, only one person. If you wrote a song that everyone in the world heard once, that's a very small effect on a huge number of people. We want to find the balance in between to develop a tribe. A tribe is where you have a large enough group to make a difference and also be able to do a large amount of effect on them. Right now, by listening to this podcast, you're in the largest circle of my tribe. People have heard my voice. But to really have that deep effect on you, you'd have to be someone who reads my blog every day, listens to every podcast, connects with me, emails with me, messages me within the different Facebook groups, and follows my fan page, and reads all my blog posts, and goes through some of my courses, and is following the same path, and trying to build your own writing or online marketing empire, trying to just make enough money to quit your job. You're following what I teach. That's when we're on the same page. And that's when we kind of have that leader tribe member effect, that connection. And that's what you want to develop with your followers. You want to form connections that allow them to become raving fans. A lot of that comes from dialing in to who you really want to reach out to. If you try to reach everyone in the world, it'll never work. Have you ever noticed how every movie has really good reviews and really bad reviews? There's no movie that 100% of people think is great. Everyone's favorite movie has someone who hates it. I used to go to college with a guy whose favorite movie was The Postman, which is most people's least favorite movie. He loved that movie. He went everywhere with his copy of it. I remember one time he talked us into watching it. I was like, isn't that supposed to be terrible? And he spent 45 minutes explaining the background of the movie to us. It's like a five or six hour movie or maybe it's a three hour movie. I don't know. It's so long. I was dying. He spent so long talking about this movie he was passionate about. And that's what you want to get from your followers. You want to build this army. This starts by becoming reachable. The more ways your audience, your followers can find you, connect with you, learn from you, the better. If you want to learn from me, if you want to connect with me as a leader, you can listen to this podcast. You can read my blog posts. You can read my book on Amazon. You can buy my courses and read the PDFs or watch the videos that are part of every course. You can follow my Facebook fan page. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on all the other social media places that I'm set up. And I'm always trying to follow it all. There's always something new. There's always a different social media way. There's all these ways that you can find information, teaching, knowledge from me. That's the first part of being reachable, where people can find your information and access it. And there's a lot there. For example, you start your first blog. If you only write a blog post once a week, you'll never get to the tribe level of connection because people, they're not offered enough information. You're not offering them enough bandwidth. Some of the websites I follow, I only read very few blogs because I need constant information. One of my favorite blogs I used to follow for a long time, he writes a post every three weeks, so it's not even worth me checking anymore. I say to myself, I'll check in six months, that way I can read for 20 minutes instead of reading a post and then hoping the next post is something I like. The less frequently you post, the less interest you get from your followers. That's why for the first two months of this podcast, I'm putting out five episodes a week. So if you really want to enjoy my message, if you really want to hear from me, you can do that because there's lots of content. 
And I need to accelerate as well the amount of content on my blog so that people can spend more time there. I have like 100 posts that are half written in draft. I always have these ideas and I put them in draft and I want to release them faster and faster because I know when someone gets excited and someone finds you for the first time, I do this. Sometimes I find a blog, it sounds amazing. I go, I'm going to read every post. And I do this when I find a new online comic as well. I go, I got to see every single one they've ever done. When we get excited, we go through all that content. And we're building that connection where we want to get our tribe going. We need to offer lots and lots of content because people need lots and lots of content. This is something that's much stronger in America than it is in other countries. In England, a TV show has six episodes. The best TV shows in England. There's a show I used to watch that was on for 10 years. That means they have 60 episodes. In America, 60 episodes is one or two seasons. We're really gluttons for content. We're greedy for content. We want more, more, more information. So the more information you put out there, the more blog posts you write, books you write, however you're providing content, however you're generating information for your people, you need to do a lot. Volume, it has that value so people can get excited about you. The next element is the reachability. The more you develop a two-way street, people want to feel like they know you have a connection with you. You know a little bit about my family. You know, I have two kids. I live on the beach. I live on a small island. You know these elements of my life. And I tell lots and lots of personal stories in my books and in different places. And I'm sure in different podcasts, I'll mention different things about me. The more people feel like you're a real person, the more your followers, more people reading your blog or reading your books or whatever type of content you're generating. When you're building a tribe, and this is really the content generation business framework. This is not the buying and selling traffic. That's a different type of business. But when you're the center of your business, when people are excited about you, They want to know who you are. They want to know your personal story. The more you share with them different pieces of your life, and you don't have to share your address or pictures of your kids. I don't post pictures of my kids online. That's not my vibe at all. But I'll tell stories about them and share the journey so people can feel that emotional connection. You can tell that I'm a real guy with a real family going through real experiences. Then people can feel more of a sense of rapport or connection with me as a real person and get to know me. And that's what you want to offer so people can begin to see more of you. And that's why you then develop your social media platforms. You then develop more interaction in the comments on your website. These little pieces allow people to say something to you. And when you reply, they get very excited. Most people are so shocked when they send an email to me and I reply personally. But I reply to every email that comes in myself. 99% of the time, people get an email from me and they read it or don't read it. Click on the link, don't click the link. Read my new blog post or don't read it. But they never reply to me. They never go into that feedback cycle and they don't see what happens when you do that. It's very valuable to someone at the top of a tribe when they start to get feedback and they start to hear back from you. Sometimes when I'm building a new course, I'll send out review copies to a couple hundred people that have been following me for a while. And then I say, hey, all I want in return is 30 seconds of your feedback so I can make it better or have a testimony for my website. And very few people do it. Now, this is normal. This is nothing personal. You've probably done it all the time. Most people don't offer me any feedback. They see that email and they ignore it because they think, hey, why do I got to do anything for this guy? What they don't see is what happens next. If you leave me a really good review, I'm going to notice that and connect with you. And then when you say, you email me and say, hey, I'm stuck at this. Will you help me? Or, hey, can we hop on the phone? I'm going to go, of course, because you did something for me. You gave some value to me. This is how you start to find the first people that will be members of your tribe, the people that actively email you, that understand reaching out leads to connection. There's a value to that. I leave reviews of books all the time. I reach out to people whose stuff I like all the time. I want to give that value, even though I'm not trying to get anything back. But I do know that sometimes when you send a really great email to an author or leave an amazing message on their Facebook page, sometimes they'll reply directly. When I was studying music in my 20s, I had to write a paper about one of the songs by Michael Jackson. And I found the email address of the drummer for that particular song and I emailed him and he wrote me back. I couldn't believe it. Sometimes you can reach people that you'd never think you could reach out to. Someone who's part of something very successful, someone who's performed on one of the most successful songs of all time, will actually email you back. You'll find people in your tribe, the first adopters. These are the people that will write the first comment, will send you the first email, will be the first person to message you on Facebook. And when you reply, they'll go back and forth. They're excited about what you're teaching and they want to learn it and they want to succeed. It takes a little while to build this element of your tribe. And if you're doing a pure entertainment type of material, if you're doing like a video game review blog or you're doing comic books or something like that, it's not as heavily about implementation. They're just someone who's excited about you and tells other people. But either way, you're going to find early on the first people who are taking action are the ones who get excited about you, the early adopters. And they'll begin to tell their friends about you, share the material with you. But you do have to sift. For every 100 people that buy any online course, 99 of them will never finish it. Every single person I know, and I know lots of marketers in the same field as me. I know people that sell thousands of units a day. And whether you have a small audience or big audience, you'll often discover this is what happens. Most of your audience doesn't read everything. They don't finish anything to completion. But when you find that one person who does, that one implementer, 
you start to form a relationship. And right now, as I'm building out this new brand, I'm moving into really growing Serve to Master into something I'm excited about. I respond heavily to the early adopters, people who email me the most. I sent out review copies of my Amazon book, two or 300 people to help me with early reviews, but also early edits to say, hey, let me know if you catch any errors that I missed. Out of those 300 people, only two emailed me any errors. One guy emailed me 45 or 50 things he caught, tiny, tiny mistakes that even when I read the sentence, I didn't notice it because I'd seen the sentence so many times, but he offered me a huge amount of value. It was very helpful to me. And so I sent him, I emailed him back, go, here's my personal Skype. Let me help you with the next thing you're working on because what you did was so valuable to me. I found an outlier and I'm very excited about that and I'm gonna give a lot of value. As much as I do this as the person on top, I also, when I'm learning from someone else, it's the same thing. When you wanna join someone's tribe, whether you're following me or someone else, the more you connect with them, the better. A lot of times we join tribes late. The first round, the early adopters, those are the people that had an iPod before anyone else. Those are the people that jump on and try new technology. It's the same thing when you're developing something. When you are in the second phase, you get people that aren't really tribe, but they're just fans and followers. And these are people that join a tribe once it's very large. There's other people out there. There's other books out there about quitting your job, working only a few hours a week, and they have massive followings of hundreds of thousands of people. And most people jump into those types of tribes. They say, oh, I'm not an early adopter. I want to wait until everyone else has confirmed it's cool, then I'll jump in. They're the last person to join. That's 99%. When you have the core 1,000 people, if you start with 10, build up to 100, to 1,000 of people that are early adopters, people that read all your courses, always write reviews, always give you feedback, are excited about what you do, share everything you do on social media, follow you on Twitter, actually read all your posts, that's the real tribe and that's what's really exciting. And for these people, the fact that they can communicate with you back and forth, the fact that they can DM you on Twitter and you reply, all of that stuff is a huge value. That gets them excited because that's how we wanna interact with the world these days. For me, I'm not really interested in following someone that I can't actually talk to. Even if it's just getting someone to reply to my comments on their blog or reply to their message on my, my message if they message their Facebook page, something. I want to be able to hear their voice if I say something. That's very important to me. And that's how most of the world now exists, where people who want to interact with our heroes, you can send messages to most movie stars on Twitter. And if you say the right thing, they'll reply. You can actually get a response from a lot of movie stars, a lot of authors, a lot of really top of the pile people. And the reason for that is because it's now an expectation. We now expect people to run their own Twitters or to at least read their own Twitter accounts several times a week. We expect that type of communication to be available. We know that if you, if you write a letter by hand, you're probably not get a handwritten reply from anyone who's super famous. But you can connect with people on social media. You can get people to follow you back on Twitter. You can get a celebrity or someone, your version of a celebrity, someone who you're following to retweet something. If you write a really great tweet at me and I see it, I'll retweet it. That's something really cool. And that's what people expect. As you're building your tribe, you have to offer this to the people that follow you. You have to show them that you're paying attention to them. If you just do one direction communication, here's my message, listen to it. I have no interest in what you have to say. You'll never get to the point where you create a tribe. You'll have some followers, maybe people that are fans of you, but they'll never cross into that fanatic or proselytizing area where they want to tell everyone else about you. Being reachable is what's really powerful. And when you become reachable, when people get excited and are chomping at the bit to see the next thing you're doing, that's when you can generate real support. There's several really interesting business models that are growing right now. One of them is the Patreon business model. This is where your followers pay you for content. This is what a lot of guys are doing on YouTube right now, guys and gals who have big followings or even a smaller following and you just say, hey, I wanna keep making content. I don't wanna sell anything directly, but I'd ask you to support me. And you can go to Patreon and you can just say, every time this person makes a video of the type I like, I wanna donate a dollar. If you have a tribe of a thousand people, that means they're gonna give you a dollar each time you make a video. You'll make $1,000 for every video you release to YouTube. If you do one video a month, you'll make $12,000 a year. If you do four videos a month with your little tribe of just 1,000 people that trust you enough, you'll make $48,000 a year. Each of those people is only investing $48 in your teaching. They're not spending a lot of money. It's a very small amount. It's a dollar a week. It's something they won't even notice, but it adds up when you're the person receiving it. And that comes from being tribable. For people building this business model on YouTube, they respond to all of their comments. You'll never see someone doing really well with this business model that doesn't communicate. When you see those videos where the comments are turned off, you're not gonna see a lot of tribe building. You're not gonna see a lot of that real connection. The real connection, the real tribe building has to have that element of communication. That's where when you post a question under someone's video, they reply. How many times you're on YouTube, you're trying to learn something, you see that video and you post a comment and it never gets replied to. Sometimes I see videos and they have comments from five or six years ago that never got a reply. And you'll notice once they get three or four comments with no reply, people stop commenting, it becomes dead. 
interacting with your tribe, even if you're purely going into this type of model, it still has to exist. People need to be able to reach you so they feel excited about supporting you. The element of tribe, there's an element of it that also includes the people around them. They don't just want to connect with you. They want to connect with the other people who follow you. And that also comes out in the comments where one guy comments and someone else replies and then a girl hops in with her opinion and then another guy replies and another girl. You can get that back and forth feedback. So there's a bit of conversation from your followers with each other. Allow them to communicate with you. And what you'll see is that your early adopters, your first tribe members will pass on your teachings, pass on what's great about you, share their favorite video of yours, they'll share what they've learned from following you, they'll share their favorite blog post with the new people. New people will join, new tribe members will join, people that are getting really excited about what you teach, and the people that have been there for a while will actually work on your behalf, like, oh, if you really wanna message him, you gotta message him on Twitter, he doesn't trust Facebook as much. And that person will then become more and more a member of your tribe because the leader, the early adopters are helping them along. They'll start sharing your teachings. They'll say which of your courses is the best. They'll tell people all these amazing things about you. Your tribe will continue to grow all because you really have these early adopters. And the important thing is that this is a relationship built on trust. That means you don't recommend products you don't believe in. You don't recommend stuff you've never tried or seen just because there's a really great commission. You don't break that trust. Because once you do, if you break trust with your tribe, you will never regain it. Trust is very easy to break, but it's very close to impossible to repair. Look at people who broke trust 20 or 30 years ago. There are certain celebrities, they had an incident in the 80s. Some people, they broke trust with their audience in a different way or their fans lost faith with them. And 30 or 40 years later, they still can't do big movies. They still can't get onto big TV shows. They're still suffering from that moment of broken trust. You must remain faithful with your tribe. Don't teach anything that doesn't actually work. My courses all work. I would never put out a product that doesn't work, especially my face is on it, my name is on it. You can see my face all over my website. That's there forever. If you put something out into the internet that doesn't actually work or that's just you read someone else's course, you made your own version of it, you don't know if it works and you start selling that, which a lot of people do, you're putting your name on something and you're hoping that it works. And that is how you break faith with your tribe and you'll lose them. If you start doing things that your tribe doesn't connect with or that doesn't make sense, you have a comic book for a long time and suddenly you inject, instead of it being humorous, you switch to it and inject a lot of politics, you'll lose a lot of your followers who go, hey, I come here just to be entertained. I don't want politics mixed in. It doesn't fit. You can lose your tribe by changing your message. You want to start off being consistent. If you were always a political comic, then those same people would be fine with it. It's not that you're political. It's that you've become in a moment for them political, that you've suddenly changed. It's the change that turns people off, the sudden shift. Have a consistent message. Have something that you believe in. Have something that is consistent, and people will follow you and be excited about you for a very long time. I try to be very consistent in my messaging. I try to be very consistent in replying to people's emails. Now, I'm not perfect about social media. I'm trying to get better and better about checking everything every day and reading every tweet and every Facebook, but I'm not perfect about that, but I try my best. I check Facebook, I check almost every day. You'll discover if you follow me and try and reach out to me in different ways that I pay a lot of attention. And the more you align yourself with whichever tribe you join, the more the leader of that tribe will then align themselves with you. Maybe you've decided, hey, I want to follow one of the other laptop millionaires, laptop travel the world, digital nomad blogs, and that's your guru. You listen to this podcast because I'm fun, but the rest of the time when you're reading, when you're following courses, you follow someone else. That's okay. The more you fall into alignment with that person, the more you start leaving comments, the more you start leaving reviews, buying products, being honest with the person, giving feedback, emailing them directly to their website in the contact form, all of those things will lead them to start communicating back with you. People that you think of as very far away are actually reachable. Most gurus, most high people who have tribes of less than 10,000 people, when you email them, they'll email you back. You can actually get that two-way communication and start to form a real relationship. When someone has a much larger tribe and you want to get on their radar, that's when you buy an hour of their coaching and that's how you move up to the higher echelons of the tribe and skip over the lower levels of one-way communication and move into two-way communication. This is how you can join a larger tribe and get noticed in the same way. The more you give to the person leading your tribe, the more you'll get back. And you'll do the same thing. As you build your business, as you launch your blog, launch your Facebook channel, move in the direction you're moving in. Maybe you purely want to write books for Amazon and you have no interest in doing a blog. So you just have your Amazon presence and then you have your social media, Facebook, Twitter. As long as you respond to the people who message you, you can form a tribe in that way. People will leave positive reviews for your books. People will email you. People will follow you in that way. You can form a very strong following with a very simple platform and a little bit of social media, a little bit of communication and a little bit of email. You don't have to do a lot of things, but you wanna 
teach the people who follow you that their actions are rewarded. And I can tell you right now that people who keep trust with me, who follow me, people who leave me reviews, who give me positive or honest feedback and let me know, hey, I found this part of the course confusing. When people do that for me, if someone sends me some negative feedback, they say, hey, video number three in this course was terrible. I found it very confusing. I didn't know what to do. My response will be to record a new video that goes in between videos three and four to cover what that person found confusing. My response isn't, this guy's an idiot. He didn't get my training. No, my response is, okay, now I know how to improve what I have. And that's very valuable to me. I want my stuff to always be better. Feedback, even if it's negative, can be very valuable to a person. There's a lot of value in communication. The people you're following, the blogs you read, all of those people, they're desperate for your comments, desperate for your feedback. It's very valuable to them. When you do those things, you'll get rewarded. And if you do those things for me, I reward you heavily. The people that leave me a lot of reviews, I often say, I'll give you early access to my course if you'll just tell me what's good and what's bad and how I can tighten it up and leave me an honest testimonial. There's a lot of people that will give you two, three, five thousand dollar courses if you just do that stuff. And you demonstrate that you're that kind of person by demonstrating that you're an implementer, that you're someone who executes. When you go through the smaller course and leave a review, now they go, okay, this person's serious. I'll give them access to a little bit bigger course. Sometimes people message me and they say, oh, I don't have any money. Will you give me your $5,000 course for free? I'll leave you a testimonial. And I know that those people won't. I actually know that if I give someone that much value, they won't actually do it because people won't execute because they'll say, why don't I give you my smaller course? You show me that you can go through a two-hour course and leave me honest feedback, give me some real feedback, show me you can implement. Then yeah, I can give you access to bigger things, but most people won't do that. If you're wondering how to form a relationship with whichever tribe you want to join, demonstrate that you can execute, demonstrate that you can implement, and they'll be very excited to communicate with you. And the same thing as you build up your following, the more you connect with those who execute and those who implement, the more they'll go from tribe members to raving fanatics who will tell everyone how amazing you are and they'll give you enough of a following to generate a very nice income. To celebrate the launch of this podcast, I'm giving away some epic prizes. You could win an Amazon tab and have me personally turn you into a best-selling author. To win your part of over $20,000 in prizes, go to servenomaster.com backslash contest. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow.